it's Shell C from Paper Rock Tio Studio and today I have my index card a day challenge cards for days 39, 40, and 41. So a lot of people have been leaving me comments about how they can't draw and how I draw well and they wish they could draw like me. Well, first of all, I don't draw very well. It's still a work in progress. But the second thing is that you don't have to draw to be able to do the things that I do. There's lots of other options. And I'm showing you on this card one of the options. This is a, a digi stamp that I got from Wink Wink Ink, and they happen to be giving this one away for free. And one of my ideas for an index card was to do a cupcake because I think they're so cute and yummy. And I saw this one and I thought that's perfect. And so I decided to show this to you as an option for drawing. This came with like 25 little files and some of them were already colored in some of them were black lines and in the case of these ones that I printed out they're just very very light lines so you can go over the lines with your own inking and make it look like you drew it so it's a really good option if you don't feel like you can draw also digital stamps you can manipulate them digitally I used uh, publisher so I was able to take the little cherry and move it over and put it on top of the cupcake um, I could put the little pick in, put the little saying on the pick, and print it all, all out at one time, rather than having to cut each individual little thing out. Also, I could have made it bigger or smaller. So those are a lot of great options if you think that you're you know, not going to use something that often that you want to make a rubber stamp out of it, which then becomes a stamp that you can't manipulate. And, you know, these you can. So... I would suggest you go over to winkwinkink.com and check out all their cute designs. They have a mermaid that I really like and they're not that expensive. So I am I have colored this in using my Neocolor 2 water soluble crayons which I really love and I used white acrylic paint with my water barrel brush. That's a brush that has water in, inside the handle. and. The reason that I do that is so that I can mix that little bit of acrylic in with the what was is basically a watercolor from these crayons to make it a little bit more permanent because I know I'm going to cut this out and collage it onto the card which means I'm going to get it wet. So the next thing I did was to take my Posca pen and draw the lines and now it looks like I drew the cupcake. I really just traced over those extremely light brown lines with my black pen but it it certainly looks as if I've drawn it so really great option I, I'm having a lot of fun with this little set um, next I'm going I, I ended up cutting the pick out separately because I realized that my positioning it would be hanging over the edge of the card it was a little bit too big so I'm just going to do it separately and put it behind um, shouldn't have cut it out before I inked it Yes, do the inking before the cutting. It's very difficult to ink something on a very, on a tiny little edge like that um, before you cut it out. This it's one of these days. Remember, I've I've told you that sometimes I'm just going to leave this stuff in when I make mistakes because I'm not perfect. I'm so far from perfect, and I make mistakes every time, and things go wrong and things go crazy, and you know that's just how it is. <laughs> so, um, yeah, wasn't too easy to ink that. The next thing I'm going to do is to collage this onto the card and so I'm getting out my um, gel matte medium. I like the gel unless I'm doing very thin things and putting this on. I like to use a plastic palette knife and just kind of scrape it over the back and then lay it down and then smooth it out over the top as well. Now I made another mistake when I was doing this. I didn't make sure that the Posca pen was dry, and so I smeared it. See, I do this stuff all the time. Make sure the Posca pen, pen ink is dry before you glue it. <laughs> so I have these little smeary lines. I'm going to have to fix it. There's really no mistakes that you can't fix. And oh look, another one. Put the tape on before you glued it, glue down the cupcake if you want it to look like that's a tablecloth, because the cupcake needs to be on top of the tape. <laughs> So I had to cut out a little section of the tape. <laughs> you see? You see how it goes? That's how it goes, people. <laughs> so anyway. Okay, it's on. 
a pla- on a um a tabletop top or maybe a really colorful plate now it's all good so i went around the edges with uh, my ranger archival <coughs> excuse me archival ink to try to make an edge and then now i'm just kind of fixing up the lines and trying to get rid of the smearing that i had caused by not making sure that the ink was completely dry and i'm going to end up putting some other colors over the top of it just to try to make it not look so bad so touching up touching up now i have a whole set of 15 different colors of posca and i'll link all of the materials that i'm using below in the description where it says see more that box down there i'll, I'll link it all up so that you can see so once the cupcake liner is fixed up to my satisfaction, then I'm just going around the whole cupcake using a taupe colored pit pen. They're the ones that um, are, are the indie ink. And this one is really good for just making that image look as if it's blended in. Then I'm taking some, some of the other colors of Posca's and just dotting them on the cupcake to make sprinkles because I think it should have sprinkles because cupcakes should have sprinkles. Dotting them all over a lot of different colors. And then next, I um, I don't like the edges because they're too white and I have a little bit of leftover pink just sitting on my palette from a project I'd done previously. So I'm just rubbing it around the edges to cover up those white edges that I didn't like. Then I've got my white Posca and I'm adding some highlights because you do all over the place. <laughs> And some splatters because splatters and then to finish it off I'm using this stuff that's called glass bead gel it has glass beads in it inside of a heavy gel and it'll look like kind of like uh, sprinkles of sugar when it's dry it dries clear see how it looks like sugar isn't that cool <laughs> don't you just want to eat up that cupcake <laughs> it's so cute okay for day 40 I decided that I just wanted to limit my palette. This was my challenge to myself. Use some weird colors together and just only pick three and that's it. That's all you get. So I started out with orange and I'm just using bubble wrap to make an interesting background of circles. And then I've got purple and I'm going to end up with lime green. So orange, purple, and lime green. These are Liquitex Basics acrylic paint in tubes. And I'm going to use that for everything. I'm going to use it for the background and the foreground as well. I've got a couple different sizes of bubble wrap. These make really cool circles. And so I'm just going with all with circles. I've got bubble wrap. I've got some different pieces of uh, other circle making tools that are on my desk, which that one's the inside of a roll of something, a tube from the inside of something smaller than toilet paper, but toilet paper tubes make great circles too. That one is a sponge dauber, and I just am using the back end of it to make circles. This is just basic mark making with stuff that you have. It's a lot of fun and easy to do. I decide the background's too dark, so I decide to go over it with some white, and I'm using the big bubble wrap again. These also work really great on your jelly plate, so they're good for that too. So just save the bubble wrap that you get in a package next time. So that pretty much covered up uh, all my other little circles that I had marked on there. So I decided to do them again with the uh, paper roll and the sponge dauber. So they're coming back in the foreground again. Have to add a little bit more paint to my palette. But I will be spritzing it. You'll see me spritz it with water. I do live in a very dry climate where the paint dries out. And I want to make sure that I keep that paint to use to paint my foreground image. Then I just uh, put some green spritz on there with some deco art spray and now I'm putting splatters on. The deco art spray is not water reactive like a lot of the other ink sprays are so that's kind of fun if you're gonna be collaging over the top of something you can put a permanent spray on there. It's the only one that I know of that is. So then I decide to just draw a quirky little character, some kind of whimsical, goofy drawing, um, quick and easy, with a mechanical pencil with my soft graphite. You know, that's what I like. 
and uh, I have a new eraser. The eraser fairy never showed up, so I had to buy it myself, but it's a nice soft white eraser that I like. Brand new, barely been used. <laughs> and it erases the soft graphite, graphite really well, so I'm happy with it. So I'm just drawing this funny little girl with her funny little outfit, and I'm going to be painting her in with this, the paint that's left on my palette. Same colors, orange, purple, green. And then I'm also going to use a little bit of the white and that leftover pink to do the skin. But I'm going to make her a little coat or whatever it is. Short bathrobe? I don't know. <laughs> orange. <laughs> and I'm using a uh, round, small detail brush and then also a flat, small brush. Um, back and forth, back and forth to do the details of the painting. Just simple painting. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I'm gonna make some circles on her jacket using the end of a pencil, which I keep for that reason. It's a brand new eraser on a pencil and I use it to make marks, so. It's also on my desk. Painting in her leggings with purple. I'm going to give it a good dry. Now for the skin tone, I have a little bit of that leftover pink and some orange, and I'm just mixing it in with the white that's left over to make a bit of a skin tone. Pretty easy. You can make skin tone for Caucasians very easily using orange and pink and white. And then, you know, a little bit darker on her lips, and then the white up the bridge of her nose just to do a little bit of shading. But this is... Simple, whimsical, silly character. Striped leggings. She's fun. If you're enjoying these videos, um, please give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment so I know you're here. Subscribe so you don't miss any videos. And also share if you want to on your Facebook or Pinterest or something. These things help YouTube know that I'm making videos that people like and they might recommend it to someone who hasn't found me yet. So that would be very helpful if you guys would do that for me. It's free and it's fun. So now I have my fine tip black Posca and I'm doing the inking portion of the event. Going over everything and, uh, you know, illustrating. This is what illustration looks like. And then some fussy cutting. Super fast. I wished I cut that fast in real life. I don't. This is sped up. <laughs> and I did manage to stay in screen. Everyone clap. I stayed in screen while I was cutting. That was pretty impressive. Then this is a very thin paper, so I'm just applying it with liquid matte medium because uh, it's just paper from the printer. Then instead of doing dark around the edges, I'm using white and just kind of edging everything around her and knocking back the background, which is very busy, just right behind her so that she stands out. Of course, because I was blotting it, I got white on her face and now I have to fix that in her hair. <laughs> Because things don't ever go exactly perfectly, they don't. But everything is fixable and there are no real mistakes. Unless you were to catch it on fire or something, which could happen if you're using a heat tool with it. <laughs> you can catch things on fire. Okay, let's just say that. You gotta be careful. That's probably uh, not something you can fix. And then of course I have my white Posca pen and adding some highlights and little you know, details with that. Because that's what you do. Then I have this piece of paper that's been sitting around on my desk. It's from Seven Gypsies Paper Pad Gypsy Moments and it just has a bunch of words on it. So I'm gonna cut out little words and stick them on. They're fun words. They're, it's not phrases, it's just fun little cute words. So. I like it. It's a good one. Also using the Liquitex matte medium on that. And then I'm going to draw the black lines around it. And I'll be done with this card for day 40. 
I think the words are cute. They're, they go well with the little quirky little person. Oh, of course, I have to draw her something to stand on because I can't stand it when things are floating. Gotta have a ground. You know, gotta have a ground. <laughs> and also, apparently, some white highlights at the end. And here comes your close-up. She's cute. <laughs> Goofy. So for day 41, it was all about texture, texture, texture. I just wanted to make as much texture as I possibly could on a card. So this is heavy gesso. It's uh, got a lot more oomph to it, and it stands up when you put it on there. So I'm just putting that on my card, and then I'm going to stamp into it to create texture texture. So I've got this stamp. I think it's from Hero Arts. Maybe I got it at Tuesday morning. And then I have a Stampin' Up! stamp set that has a little Harlequin and a little flower that I'm going to use. Be sure that you clean up your stamps when you put acrylic on them because acrylic is plasticky, rubbery stuff and stamps are rubbery stuff and they tend to want to stick together. So you want to clean it up while it's still wet or else keep it wet or you're going to have a mess on your hands and you might even ruin your stamp. So yeah, just uh, stamping with rubber stamps into the heavy gesso. That one's from Prima. There's other brands of heavy gesso out there. Then I heat it up for a long time. And then uh, when I finally decide that it's dry enough, I'm going to use these golden high flow acrylics. These are very fluidy. And I want them to flow and sink in to the depressions on the texture so that it shows up. So I'm using quinacridone, magenta, cobalt teal, and indigo. These came in a set. Like, I think there's eight different colors. And I think those colors look together. Look good together. And then I have also have this interesting little piece left over for collage at some later date. So it's all bumpy and textury, and I'm trying to decide what to do with it. And I end up getting out some Inca gold. Um, this is like a beeswax mixed with mica, I think, to make a metallic paste, and you can just rub it on there. Um, this one is called Old Silver or Antique Silver, and I thought it was gold. So I ended up putting more gold stuff on when I probably should have went tw towards the silver instead. It looks like gold, so I wasn't really looking, but then once I figured out, it was silver. <laughs> Also, uh, I used to be a Stampin' Up! demonstrator a long time ago, and I was for a very long time, and I have a lot of stamps that are still unmounted. Back in the day, you trimmed and mounted your own stamps. So that's what I'm doing. I'm mounting the four so that I can use it. <laughs> because this is day number 41, so I'm going to stamp 41 on it on some dark blue paper with gold ink. Then I've also got like a little scrap of metallic gold paper that was laying around somewhere on my desk or on the floor and I'm just sticking that on there as well with some Aileen's tacky glue and then to add even more texture I end up putting some gold cord on there and like a little um, just a little tangle of gold cord to circle the 41 and it works out pretty well actually a lot of texture so there's my gold cord, and I'm just going to make it in a little kind of circular tangle and glue it on there with heavy gel. And then, as if the heavy gel doesn't add enough texture, I'm going to put some gold beads on there, some micro beads. So that stuff will dry clear, but it's going to be completely covered in beads. So, yeah, this is number 41. That means that there are 20 iCADs left. 20 left. So keep your eyes open because I plan to complete this challenge. I'm really going to do it. I'm going to complete the challenge. <laughs> I hope. So there's card number 41. All about texture, texture, texture. And that's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.